can't go out. See, this is what I mean with you. You think you know it all. Just go out. Yeah, I'll tell you what then. Let's go back and let's see you go out in the middle of the night in the jungle. There's all sorts out there. The noise that's in the jungle is nothing goes to bed at night. That's why there's a lot of nocturnal stuff. No one can get their eyes shut. Everything's off. <laughs> Snakes going, stuff flip. There was something outside my tent. I'm not joking. It was man size. And it was making a human noise. <laughs> was it a human? No, no. Like I'm talking yeah. like gorilla have... type noise. Right. Well, that's terrifying. And you're saying, oh, just look out. <laughs> Yeah, but he could go in the tent if he wanted, couldn't he? No. What is what a thin sheet of nylon keeps him... All right, lads, don't go in there. No, there's there's, don't know, there's a bit of cloth. There's a bit of cloth. We can't get through that. Wait till he comes out for a piss. He's got an Evian bottle. Oh. Where's Rude? I'm just saying, I, poured, I, had to empty, I had to empty my Evian bottle. In the morning? No, in the night, because it's only a little one like So that. you pissed in the tent and then emptied it out, so you went out there anyway? Yeah, but it's just me hand going out. Going like that and coming back in again. Surely you'd rather lose your penis than your hand. No, no, nothing wants your penis. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Honestly, there's some weird stuff out there. Do you know these fish in the Amazon that go up your knob? <sighs> now everyone's saying to me, you've seen the Amazon? That's amazing. Well, how come the stuff that lives in it doesn't want to live in it? They'd rather live in my knob <laughs> than live in the, live in the river. So you're telling me that I'm meant to be lucky. That's what I'm saying. Nowhere safe. You can never relax. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't go to school much because me mum and dad had a caravan. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> no need, is there? No need when you've got that sort of fun at home. Yeah. I used to just go away for weeks. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, honestly. Where'd you used to go? Port Maddock. But you... <laughs> 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 and um, so you didn't go to school much? No, I, I did, but not as much as everyone else. No. How many holidays were your parents having? Oh, what, what, what was their income that they could... No, well, my dad used to work nights, and uh, he used to travel back, because to Manchester from Wales, it wasn't that far. And Manchester to, do, to Wales? He used to do four on and four off, so me and my mum were, like, loving it. But what, what's... What, what, Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port Maddock. Just down the road from Port Merion, where they filmed The Prisoner. Right. Oh, so, so that's, that's cleared up for me. <laughs> yeah, so, what did, so what did you do then? You, you were in this little two-birth caravan on the back of a... Cortina estate. Right. Well, what was it? It was a car. I want the. It, what was Granada, it? Granada. Four Granada. Four Granada. What are we talking? Nineteen eighty. Yeah, eighty two, eighty three, eighty four, eighty five. Okay. And you in in the car down there? Da down there. <laughs> park up. Yeah. What was it? What What was Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port, Port Maddock. Maddock. I remember roof. It's just, oh yeah. Uh, it's just a holiday camp. Yeah. And at an arcade and a beach. I was, I was loving it. Yeah. But, um, so, so of the 52 weeks of the year, let's assume, I don't know how many weeks you take off normally for holidays anyway, let's just say, I don't know, you go to school 45 weeks of the year maybe? Generally, most kids? No. Nah. But less. A bit less than that. 42. How many weeks would you say you actually spent in school? Well, how many weeks do you have off for summer? Well, we just, we'll work that out. That's what about we six off for summer, six. about four, three for Easter, about three for Christmas. Put it this way, I'm surprised I'm not Welsh, to be honest. Right. Because I was there more than I was in Manchester. Did they not, did the school authority not come and check you no, out? No, they didn't. Didn't get Manchester, I suppose they didn't care, did they? Not really. Yeah. They're lucky you turned up at all. Why did you just turn up for the last day when you could take in your best toy? <laughs> did you just know that when you could take in any I game? Just, just play with everyone else's. Why, why, you know, I break my stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, Ooh, well, this point. answers a lot. This does answer a lot. The fact that you spent most of your time on the beach as a kid. Teachers were no good at my school. We were right. talking about it yesterday. About so you were teaching them a lesson by going off <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. And uh, did you go to university? No. No, 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 no. Did you go to sixth form or college? No. When, when did you leave school? When I was about 15. Right. What, you just went on holiday and didn't come back? <laughs> <laughs> I just got a job early, didn't I? Cause I Where was it? Port Maddock? Getting there. No, I was a printer. BM Print, print in Trafford Park. Well, that's great. That's a little interview there. Yeah, yeah a little. Uh, ne thunder. Next, I'll be interviewing Steve Merchant. What are we playing next? Bit of elbow. Oh, I, oh, this is fantastic. This is elbow. What an amazing track! Incredible. The you don't, no one else is playing that. Really? God, this has got to be the best intro of a rock <laughs> song ever. The fact that I was saying it about The Who and he was saying it about Money for Nothing is yeah, irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Someone made me sit in their car once uh, with their new car stereo system uh, so that they could play me the beginning of Money for Nothing. Oh. Just sat there, I was like, yeah. Have we <laughs> got that? You've probably them. got that in the library, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> is it right that Rod 
Roger Daltrey in yeah. The Who. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. His kid is in EastEnders, the like, one who plays Robbie. Something my mum told me, and I don't know if she's got it right or wrong. What, I, Rob, it does look like well, that's Dean, Dean Gaffney. Gaffney. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't want to go off his dad's name and that, so... He's changed so he it. used his brilliant talent. <laughs> and his no. pox face. <laughs> do, do you know if that's wrong? Well, I don't know. It but, looks like him, doesn't it? Well, I'm sure that's libelous if it's wrong. Oh, well, right, yeah, you'd be ashamed to have Roger Daltrey as your dad. Well, no, but Roger Daltrey might not want it getting round that he gave birth to Specky. Yeah, right, actually. I see what you mean. Specky? Spotty. Spotty, so I yeah. looked at you. Yeah. All right, calm down. Well, Jeez, I don't know, you've got nice, clear skin. At least I didn't call you skin. Spotty, goggle-eyed freak boy. You've you got a nice skin, a nice complexion, smooth-faced, goggle-eyed freak boy oh, fish. thank you. Yeah. That's be nice. Carl, what? Me. Don't you like us arguing? Is it like mum and dad arguing? Do you get all... Yeah, it's a bit like that. In the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> No, there was nowhere to escape to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, rattling around. Did you make door. any friends when you were down on the caravan site? Yeah, a lot of people from Birmingham were there. What kind of uh, pals did you have? What were their names? Uh, they, they were, I can't remember. It was years ago, but yeah. they all had rich parents. Right. Like, they had, like, their own car to drive around the campsite on and all that. Right. Yeah. So I their own fence. Them, so I'd have a with... and, oh. uh, But they were mates, and you saw them every year, did you? Or every three weeks when you went down there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you didn't keep in touch with any of them? Uh, no. I'll admit that. I went, I went to the same place in the caravan for about six years running. I went to a place called Riverside in Bognor, because mm. someone round the corner from us had a caravan, two-birth caravan, me, my mum and my nan. I think I'm really lucky to have, <laughs> to have, a, to have had it, really. Because a lot of mates who I had didn't have enough money to go on holiday, and they just get a present for the summer holiday. I would like, I would just like. Of course, I, they've I, got an education, so it's yeah. But Carl, about. the thing is, with Carl is right. I want to give him gifts. Yeah. I want him to be have the, have the loveliest Christmas. Ever. I want him to go pony trekking. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I want to just scare the horses. <laughs> <laughs> so many things we don't know about Carl. <laughs> fell off one out of fate, and uh, the woman didn't know what to do. She couldn't handle the horse. It was running off. I was hanging underneath, getting a kick in the head. No. Really? Now, hang on, what age were you? This could explain a lot. I was about six. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I think we got oh, to the bottom dear. of it here. Oh, no, he got <laughs> kicked in the head by a horse, uh, lived in a caravan, and had to live in Wales half the time. Oh. oh. Then no wonder this is your favourite time of the week. Do you look forward to this all week, these two hours? Uh, it's all right. <laughs> What bad. would make you truly happy, Carl? Do you mind me just asking that? What would make you truly happy in life? I was thinking about it in a week and I don't know. You don't know? There's I... nothing that you particularly want that you feel like once I've got that, that... Well, you, the easy answer there is money, isn't it? But I don't, no, I don't know. No, it's not true. I don't know if it's true. No, you know, you just need, need enough money. Do you feel spiritually uh, satisfied? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Carl, have you embraced the good word of the Lord? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, well Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We're having a meeting tomorrow. It's in the church and we'd like you to come along. I went to a church. Rick, I've got to say this. I, I was with, I got this, uh, this housemate who I don't know that well. And I've been right. living with him for about uh, two, two months or something, right? Yeah. And he's in the kitchen, he's washing up. And I just turned to him, right? And he doesn't know me that well because we, you know, we sort of talk to each other now, but we don't know. And I just turned to him, I went, Matt, have you got to know the good word of the Lord? And he went, and he looked at me with utter fear in his face. And I just went, I just think we should sit down a bit and, you know, just talk about, you know, the word of the Gospels. And, just, and he just looked at me and he was asking about I just started laughing, cracking up. And it's the sigh of relief. He was yeah. absolutely petrified. It's a brilliant game to play if you're getting a lift on a long car journey yeah. with people you don't Maybe know. Maybe it, it Just bring that out. Yeah. It's so terrifying. Yeah. I went once. If you're on. also another good one is when you pick up the hitch, I say, like, I wonder what this car would look like on fire. <laughs> exactly. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Sometimes well, I like to drive the wrong way down the motorway. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, uh, what does a knife feel like when it's going into your eye? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> what? Oh, you, you see that something? story in the week with um, with a farmer who got his arm stuck in a bit of machinery and he was going on about... I mean, he came on with a false arm, so he knew something was wrong straight away. <laughs> but, um, you knew it wasn't going to end, <laughs> happily. But, but, um, but he, was, uh, he, he said, I'm a farmer, I've been a farmer for years, and um, I've, I'm always telling people, don't stick your hands in machines. He said, but I got off my tractor and the machine had stopped mm. and he went to shift some, I don't know, if it was a Coke can or something that... That was in the field and yeah, the machine. Bloody cage drinking. He, oh, this is not the famous one that about fifteen years, and he, he he took his arm to the yeah. hospital and he was making jokes. His no, arm no, was in ice. He didn't take his no no no. no. What it was, it was um <laughs> his hand went in and the machine started again. Yeah. And it started pulling it pulling at his skin. Oh. Right? So like the skin was coming off his arm. Yeah. And it was going around the rollers yeah. and he's pulling back like that, so he's like, Oh god. Yeah. And the skin's like being wrapped around and it's like pulling it. So we can see his bone and stuff. Oh, no. And um, he was there for, like, ages going, oh, God. And he had um, a, a pen knife in his pocket, 
So you got that out with the other hand, managed to open it. I mean, that's... that's yeah, because yeah, they stick, don't they, after a while. I've got, I've got one of those um, Swiss can't Army can't knives. Can't. And well, that's what it was. I, 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 I can't do it with two hands sometimes, once they get all full of gunk. He managed to do that with one hand and yeah. cut away at the skin. That's not true, is it? Yeah. Has he learned to farm again, like the drummer of Def Leppard? Has learned to drum again. Have they got, like, just like the handles, like... Can you farm now with just one arm? <laughs> it was good, because he was making a joke out of it and that. Oh, that's I think, good, though. I think that's good, good but... Um... That doesn't mean you can, Steve, then. No, sure. He had to cut his own flesh off to escape a combine harvester. Yeah. He doesn't need you, you know... Making voice cracks. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Sure. I, I just always remember getting a hot plate out of the oven when I was younger, and that absolutely killed. Yeah. It stuck to my fingers, and I just thought, the pain that he must have been going through. Yeah. Must have been, what, you must, must have been worse than a hot plate? Oh, it must have been worse than maybe dropping a pie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. When are we going to talk about Carl? Have we run out of stuff yeah. already? Oh, okay, let's go. Okay, now, uh, yeah. So uh, where did you go, Carl? What was the story? Um, it was my birthday, mm -hmm. right? Um, went home after doing, working with you a couple of Saturdays ago, mm -hmm. right? Uh, girlfriend was like, open your card, open your card. And I said, no, it's my birthday on, on Monday, I'll open it. You obey by the rules, certainly your <laughs> right. birthdays. Right. Birthday said, rules. Well, there's no point. Well, exactly, <laughs> chaos leads that way. Yeah, <laughs> right, so... Uh, Not an anarchist, never has been. So yeah. anyway, she, she was kept going on, and it was doing me head in, so I said, all right, I'll open it. Yeah. So I opened it, ticket fell out. Uh, surprise holiday to one of the Canary Islands. So... And what was your reaction? I mean... The first you... one was, we haven't got enough money. Right for this, but I didn't want to ruin it, so no, no, no. so I didn't I didn't go on about that, and I said, "Oh, it'd be great." <laughs> so I can't wait. So, <laughs> Did you say uh, it in that tone of voice? Well, it was good timing because I was tired and everything, mm. and uh, I'm not a big holiday fan, no, but the no. timing was right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the same as last night. I don't always like a curry, but last night... You're in the yeah. mood. You get that sort of, oh, yeah. Curry feeling. You had a feeling. You had a feeling. feeling. Yeah. Yeah. You had a feeling you thought, oh, and, and then, lo and behold, like, you were eating the curry. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Isn't it weird, the paranormal? Like isn't it weird? Isn't it weird? They, they work in mysterious ways. Yeah, ghosts. yeah. So yeah. anyway, right, um, yeah. the island, um, if I was on once you were here, I'd probably say it's a bit barren. Okay. Um, not much there, mm -hmm. but if you get a hotel, you guarantee good weather. Right. Are you? No, what I mean is, <laughs> it'll be a good <laughs> holiday. If you get a hotel, right, the, the weather's always good, so, you're, so you'll you have a nice yeah, time. Yeah, it was a calmer, yeah, it was a, yeah, go um, And all that, and the food was all right, and, uh, and everything was going all right. I was just having a nice, relaxing time. And how do you sort of spend your time on a holiday? You just lie around? Is that that sort of holiday, just lying around. Yeah. I, I, I bought a book. You bought a book? Yeah. Okay, ghosts? No, it was it was short stories, right? It about was like ghosts? No, it was about, like, uh like special days in our time and um, time oh. before me and stuff oh, yeah. and it was like uh it was telling you about how in i think it was 1814 the thames frozen up yeah and all these stories are told by eye eyewitnesses yeah, yeah right so there's some fella who was around in 1814 and uh the thames was frozen and people used to uh put market stalls on there yeah, and they'd yeah. do the shopping it was like a sh it was like like an oxford street was that mad liar charlie <laughs> No, because he's famous for that. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure, you know. No, I think that was Mad Lie Charlie. Right. Yeah. So I was reading that, and then after a couple of days, it was a bit like, oh... Boring. Yeah, yeah. You can do. You can only do sort of so much lying around. And so much reading. So, uh, Suzanne said, let's go on the beach, yeah. have a walk. You ain't gone on the beach. Where have you been the, the, up to this point, then, in, the, in your room? No, just like around the pool, just, mm, sure. just relaxing and yeah, having yeah. a swim and that. Yeah. Um, so she said, let's go on the beach. I said, all right, then, yeah. So, uh Wandered down to the beach, and uh, first impressions are, yeah, it's all right, it's clean. Uh, so <laughs> Your criteria good. is so basic, it's weird. <laughs> right. Hotel, yes. Roof, good. <laughs> Food, adequate. Beach, clean. Next. So I'm walking along, and everything's good, and, uh, you know, there's a woman uh, feeding fish bread, which I uh, thought, that's different. <laughs> He likes originality. He loves a bit of originality. <laughs> he was feeding <laughs> fish bread. This woman was there, like, up to her, up to her knees in water. Yeah. And she was stood was there. Was that a sea? Chucking, yeah. Oh, right, good. Chuck, chucking this bread. And I thought, what's she doing? And I stood there and watched for a minute. <laughs> and there was little fish coming up, having the bread. I thought, oh. So I carried on, <laughs> carried on walking. And uh, everything's going well. And then this fella comes towards me. <laughs> everything's going well. <laughs> Yeah, that's I original. haven't fallen over. <laughs> clean, clean feeding bread. Mm -hmm. yeah, Two points for originality. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fella comes walking towards me. Oi, oi. He's only got no pants on. Oh. So I said, Suzanne, what's going on? <laughs> Why did he turn 
listening to her. Like she knows more so than she him. Said, so she said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, she said, yeah, it's a nudist. Is this going to be a long story? Can you, can you pour that coffee? Can you give me that coffee over? Um, sorry. Sorry, this is really bad. Yeah, because he's poor. Thank you. Just amuse yourselves while we uh, talk the coffee. Thank you very much. Dave, do you um, want, do you want I have a cup of coffee, can't right. Thanks, yeah. Cheers. Mm. Cold. Mm. Right, good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. So... Great. Yeah, thank you. So, she said, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a nudist yeah. speech. So I said, well, why, what... I said, we're all mixed, mi it's all mixed up. Normally on a nudist speech, yeah, it's a nudist speech, and you don't go wandering on there when you get your clothes on and that. Mm. So it annoyed me a bit. Because there wasn't any signs. So this fella's getting closer. Well, the knob out was a sign. Yeah. Right, so he's getting closer. And he walked past me. It was an old fella. Uh, and he walked past me. He had a hat on and a, and a little pipe. <laughs> and a big rucksack on his back. <laughs> right, so he got me thinking... Not strictly I'm naked. I'm walking along and I'm thinking... <laughs> right, why do people want to do this? So straight away, it was, I wasn't on holiday anymore. Because most of the time, when I'm on holiday, I don't think about anything. Right. <laughs> Your I mind's just, a blank. I just switch off. <laughs> right. But all, all of a sudden, this this has got in my head now, and I turn around to, to look at him. <laughs> and Check out his eyes. And, <laughs> and the bag, and this bag, right, I swear, it was, it was massive, right? What? You had a massive bag? The, the bag. The, <laughs> his rucksack. His rucksack. Oh, right, OK. So, when I said, he said there was an old couple coming towards me, and I said, what was lower, the bloke's bollocks or the woman's tits? And he said, well, that was another point. She might as well have worn knickers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said to me. So, so, you, so you saw the bag. So it me, yeah, because the whole idea, in it, I, oh, this is what I think. And I mean, I might be wrong, right? Might be wrong. <laughs> Chances you are you never have been. Wrong. You never have been before. Being nudist, right? Mm. What's it all about? You started a diary. Yeah. And what are you gonna do? You did you did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just. Uh... Oh, can I read it, please? Well, the diary is meant to be sort. Can, of... uh, please, can I read some out on this podcast? I, Carl. Some of it, though, is only relevant to me. It's sort of oh, getting... this is. Please give me it. Oh my God. I mean, this isn't. I am just. Look so... how big it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one my of those God. Desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long, and it's ma Oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Frank's had been like that. As she got out. <laughs> right. Uh, everyone would have heard it clank down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh look! Give us oh, that. Do you know? That. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? No Amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's best right, okay. to look oh, at. Oh look! Oh look! Oh my God! It starts on the first day. This is this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today. Woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that would be good. Right, a, a watch. That counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one. But she said that about the iPod. How, uh, and how would this device work, this watch? I mean, how would you, uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins. And the no, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had, like, a little watch on... But how does it work? You can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, uh, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch that counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? Just, just wear well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean, just pop it on your wrist? How does it work, just pop it on your wrist? Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's querying his own, his own he's life. He's wondering yeah. if it would know. He's invented this. He's and invented it. now he's <laughs> even shot. Uh, a fella on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month, and I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing. Have we got any more carp? Have we got a carp that's actually done anything? That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, that, well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He yeah. was playing on his PSP while I waited to go to the toilet. I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, he can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. 
Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. <laughs> Everywhere is pretty rough, paving and slopey. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. <laughs> day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant. We're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> That's amazing! Well, you may as well let me read on a bit more. No, this is amazing. Well, look, come back this is a brilliant that. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just just that, uh, you know, when, I, when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right? I was thinking about stuff. How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is, say say if I was like, if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I being don't have said. to. But in I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, what? Just uh, looking at a fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was yeah. Um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't, I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have, Carl, Carl, li Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's, yeah, that's Is that how your of, mind works? In a way, yeah. And Brilliant. that's when, it, because, because <laughs> that I thought... That explains a lot. <laughs> it's great thing has to think about whole sentences. Cos I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I no. thought, I actually think in my accent. And then I thought, does Stephen Hawking, does he... When he's doing his maths and that, is mm. he? I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford. Right. Or so, so you think he might think in his in, in his, his voice in that yeah. in that voice in computerized voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continued to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> Day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. <laughs> <laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest holiday in the world! <laughs> uh, That's the entertainment in that town. Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> he's done nothing so far. <laughs> he's done nothing, he's got a hip. <laughs> Woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Why does he write this down? Oh, God. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot, dot, dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. You just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. Things in the diary. I just seen it get to the point where you're going, breathed in, <laughs> yeah. breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his t-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak, <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had to head back. <laughs> just let him wait in to see if he's going <laughs> to capsize. We go home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't, uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in, in weather that, if it was like that here, there's no way I'd be sat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we've got to sit in it, put your coat on. So are you going to continue to write this diary? Every yeah, single day? It's amazing. Keep this diary up. It's no, amazing. I, I, no, I will. I will keep it up because what I find as well is, I think earlier on before I went away, I think I did learn something and because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit um, better. So... What was that? 
I just was thinking then, I forgot it now, but <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all because I remembered the end of it before I read it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, if you've enjoyed uh, um, The Diary of Carl Pilkington, um, more next week, I hope, another week's worth. That's amazing. I'm going to try and get that published. We'll put the, uh, the odd page up on the uh, web. Go to rickygervais.com. Don't forget to register there as well so we can email you and let you know uh, what's happening. But anyway, that's XFM for you. 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton. Carl, you went to Lanzarote. Mm -hmm. People said don't go to Lanzarote. They told you it was Lanzarote. They told you, were they right or wrong? They were right, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a bit ropey, yeah. Is it why? Just, uh, now there. <laughs> if it wasn't for the, for the volcano they had, they'd be knackered. <laughs> That's their that's their big draw, is that's, it? That's it, basically. That's all they've got going for them. When you landed, was it really hot? Did you initially were you quite excited? You were thinking this no, is it okay. It was warm. It was, you know, we can't complain about the weather. The weather, weather was all right. Sure. You know what I mean? That's what I went for. But it'd be nice if if there just was something else. Yeah. What did you do all day then? Did you read your original book? Uh, no, I didn't. Didn't read that. I read that book. Do you know the book that I bought and all the chapters were messed up? Oh yeah. I bought, I bought a better version of that. All right. And I read that. Excellent. And then... Uh, Did it make more sense in order? Yeah, a lot easier to follow. Yeah. And then we went went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got 36 of them to look at. <laughs> what the hell did you look at before you realised that you've, you know, pretty much... You've seen one volcano, you've seen them all? Probably about six or seven. Really? Yeah. And then when you go to the eight, you thought, now I know what this is going to be, Suzanne. This is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well. It's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> fill the rest in! Yeah, no, we While getting some builders. No, seriously, though. Okay, okay, four million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. Yeah, what, yeah. What do you mean, fill them in? Do you know what a volcano is? It's just a hole, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's more than a hole. In... It's more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened... Volcanoes were made a lot longer ago no, no, no. than 1730. No, but, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. What would you suggest? Well, How can they up. fill it in? It's joined. It's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is... It the was big a, it plates was, of the earth are all joined. All the magma is joined. With the, with the Trade Centre thing, that happened. They cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in no, 1730. You misunderstand me. How, in the name of God, can you fill in a volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the, the holes. They've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. It's not just the big holes. There's lava everywhere. But it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're like a carpet. Put it in the holes. The holes are there ready. Just push it all in. <laughs> That's what ah! I'm saying. Uh, oh. uh, what, um... What exactly is there then? Is it just a kind of moon-like kind of surround with just kind of dust and rock? That's exactly. And... What, you see, I was there when the Mars thing all oh, went wrong. Yeah. I would have just sent a camera crew there, <laughs> filmed a bit of that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And say, here we are. This is it. <laughs> yeah. Ignore the little coffee shop in the background. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this is Mars because that's that's where it's like just loads of dust. Yeah. Uh, holes everywhere. <laughs> Tidy it up. Anything little little round-headed aliens yeah, complaining. Yeah. It's just, just like Mars. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so is there any? What's the best bit about the holiday? Come on, pretend you're Judith Chalmers. I have been doing. I would have done all. I would have said that. Don't bother. Right. I mean, the hotel was good. Yeah. That was all right. What uh, was that like? It's all right. Just you know, clean. That's all you want, isn't it? See, that's not quite what Judith Chalmers does. She doesn't go, what's the hotel like? All right, yeah, clean, isn't it? All right. But what was it like? Was it, what was it? Three star, four star? Did it have a swimming pool? What was yeah, the room I'd, like? Yeah, it had a swimming pool and that. Yeah? Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> if, you know, I think it was one of the better ones on the island. Okay. Um, Nightlife? Uh, Clubs, wasn't really, bars? wasn't really. Any, there was a bar, there was some bands playing. Yeah. Uh, not very good. Um, food. Food got a bit boring. Yeah. It was always the same food every night, but they sort of themed it and made out as if it was different. So, like, on Mexican night, it'd be chicken with a nacho on it. <laughs> right. Right. And Chinese night, sort of chicken with a little prawn cracker on it and stuff. <laughs> sure. But that got a bit boring. Um, 
That's me just turning on my phone because uh, I want to read to you a text right. that I got from Carl. I think you've sort of summed up the holiday in in this text, don't you? Do you remember it? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Let's go what did uh, Suzanne and your girlfriend make of it? Uh, Similar view to you, that they should fill in the uh, the holes? Yeah, it's just that thing. You see, I went on a coach trip, right? And you go and see the volcanoes. Like I say, there's 36 of them. Yeah. Um, which, you know, how many do you need? And, and when we're on the coach going round all these volcanoes, <laughs> the fella on the front's going and uh, look out your left window at the moment and there's a, there's a volcano. And uh, if you quickly look out of the... The right hand side there, there's, a, there's another one. <laughs> right. And on the left, it's just like, all right, we've seen it. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, yeah. that tri I mean, we'll talk about that trip in a bit. Right, this is the text I got from Carl, right? All right. Been up to a volcano. Been in some den art dead artist's house who built his house in the lava. They said they would show me science with volcanoes, but all they did was chuck some water in a, in a hole and it shot up in the air. No dwarves in the canteen, no scousers here, but there is a Swede woman with a big head. She looks effing gormless with a cap on. <laughs> All right? So a little reference there to... A Swede woman? What's, what's that mean? Do you mean Swedish? Yeah. Or she looked like a vegetable? No, uh, a uh, Swedish woman. Hmm. Well, they've and... all got sort of quite big bill, aren't they? And I sent, I sent him a text, oh, well, it's just good to appear on holiday because, you know, I'm working. Uh, he sent back, so am I. Just been watching Sky News. There is a school for monkeys who want to get a band together. <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news for later? Oh My Corazon by Tim Burgess. I can't get enough of that. I love that chorus. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington. But it was a nice holiday. Yeah, it's all right. It's just, uh, you know, I went there to relax and that. Exactly. Did a little bit of that. Uh, trying to think of some new, you know, features and stuff. Sure, always working, always working. Um, Three holidays a year, Jesus. Oh, well, I don't really think oh, not too. It's all but, uh, holidays, one, really. one big sort of like work... Thing to me and Steve. Yeah. Holidays, isn't it? Yeah. Work hard, you need the holidays. Uh, so, yeah, the, the the things that annoyed me was like, you you get bored sat around the pool after a couple of days. I'd read my book. Yeah. Uh, you know, there wasn't much going on on the... Not even any crabs to throw sand that, was no there? No crabs or anything. They wouldn't yeah. bother with Lanzarote, right? <laughs> so, uh, decided to go on a little little trip. That's when I saw the, the volcanoes and that, 36 of them. Uh, so... <laughs> We go on a trip, and the thing that annoys me, it does happen every holiday that you go on. If you go on a sort of a package thing, mm -hmm. you have these trips, right? And you pay about 40-odd quid, and they give you some wine to sort of make it feel like you, you're getting your money's worth. But uh, How many of these trips have you been on, then? Uh, Loads. Ooh, probably about 12. Four. More holidays than I've had. Go on. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, so go anyway, on. so you're on the, on the coach, right? And they take you... For the volcanoes, it took us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right. There's nothing else around there. Sure. It's it like like I say, it's like Mars, but with holes in the ground. Yeah. Right. And uh, you sort of drop you off, and they go, right, everybody, uh, see you back here in an hour. Uh, there's loads of volcanoes for you to look at, uh, and a coffee shop over there, and you know for a fact, right, you don't need an hour there. You could just say, well, just keep the engine running because <laughs> I'll have a look in this hole, we'll get back on, give us five yeah. minutes. <laughs> don't need an hour. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know that they've got something going on. It's a backhander, definitely. What, with the coffee shop? Definitely, definitely, definitely yeah. They, they, yeah, they, they go there and they, they get everyone to have an ice cream and a coffee and yeah. they, they, you know, they sit down and have a fag talking to the bloke. Yeah, yeah and it's like, yeah, cousin. Yeah. Have you How ever? much was the coffee? Was it probably, about, probably about three... Uh, each euro, so I think it was three fifty. Sure, yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. I don't know what that's about two and a half quid. In yeah, they stitched you up. Well, I remember we were on a, it was a family trip to France once. We went to Paris. We got a coach coming back from Paris to one of the ferries, one of the ports, Calais or wherever it was. Coach trip. It was quite a long coach trip. And at one point we were thinking, this is we're on the motorway. This is fine. We're making good progress. Suddenly we came off the motorway. We must have gone like forty minutes out of our way. End up in this street. This street completely empty. Little French town. 
and uh, it's pipe pipe inside this what appears to be a restaurant. And a guy jumps on, dressed like a butlin's red coat. He's French, but he's putting on a kind of English accent. He goes, "Hello, oh, thank you very much. Top of the morning. Good morning. Hello. Um, uh, come in. We've got food, drink. Hey, eh? go upstairs. We've got rooms if you want to have a rest day eh? or play around. No, it's up to you. And uh, we all had to funnel off this thing into this restaurant. And this one family went, "Well, we don't want to go in the restaurant. We brought sandwiches. We just want to get to the port. We're not interested." And they said, "Well, you've got to come in the restaurant." They went, "Well, we don't <laughs> want to come in the restaurant." So the guy said, well, I'll have to lock you in the coach. <laughs> so this family were locked in the coach while we all traipsed off in. And I could just look, but I looked back and just saw this little kid with his, fin- with his face pressed up against the glass. <laughs> me, I want to go in the restaurant. They were just stuck in there. Look, at, I mean, absolutely livid, as you would be. But and, it, that, um, that's definitely a backhander. But we went inside and it was extraordinary because initially you had to pass through a souvenir shop yeah. to get into the restaurant. <laughs> Perfect. And he just, he obviously, it was catered entirely to English tourists. So there was like pictures of the Queen and Prince Charles on the wall. It was done out in a kind of mock Tudor style. It's absolutely extraordinary. I mean, I, I it's just, it was almost, it was so bizarre because it was so out of the way. Did it come, did that come before the coach uh, sort of scam or did the coach guy, he knows it, is he a brother of his? I don't know how those things come about. But, um, but yeah, that is, 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 yeah, do we do, is that going on in this country? Yeah, with French I'm sure and German it's, tourists. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Is it? Yeah, they say. I, I, yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure people say, look, look, if you bring thirty people to this restaurant, I'll see you all right. But it would, wouldn't it? If you know, you got your favourites because you don't have to. The, the coach drivers pretty much god on those things because those people don't know where they're going anyway. Yeah, but at least here. There's other stuff around. You don't really get that in the middle of nowhere situation in this country. Well, not really. Not if you're going from uh, 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 London to Manchester. You could stop off anywhere. They don't know where they are. It, you, you know, there's oh, there's yeah. places with nothing to do or see. It's that what well, those those attractions. They're all there's loads of in America, but there's a there's a few here like you know Sheep World, <laughs> and uh, you know you go out to Gloucester and there's a town. It's got the biggest cotton reel in the world, and there's that's it. It's a tourist <laughs> yeah, shop, a big cotton yeah. reel, and some bloke at the gate going to quid to see it. There it is. All right. I went to um. I know it's quite a big. I went to a Shire Horse Centre once. Yeah. But I, when did Shire Horses become so? So popular that they got their own theme parks. Well, there's, I think I there's, mean, I think there's a museum for everything. Yeah, possibly. So. I, I, I mean, I don't think you, you could you could think of something that didn't have a museum somewhere in Britain because obviously museums start off sometimes by fans. But this so, is do people keep coming around going, I hear you got a shire horse. I'd love to see it. Yeah, well, I can't, people coming all the time to see my shire. You should horse. get another one because I'd probably pay double. <laughs> I'd pay good money to see your shire horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> shire horses. <laughs> I know. Have you seen them? They don't do anything. They're not like monkeys. No, they're, they're just not like monkeys. Elegant. No. Creatures, but you look no. at them in a picture or look at them in real life, pretty much the same thing. They're if not they, doing anything. If they could train a, a, a shire horse to swing on a rope and masturbate, <laughs> exactly. I'd pay double. You'd pay good money. I'd pay double for that. Yeah. There's a museum in Italy when, when we went there a couple of years back. Suzanne had a, like, one of those little guide things. Museum there just for spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, we opened a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Was it interesting spaghetti? Spaghetti in different shapes? I don't know, I didn't go. I went to see a big hole in the ground. <laughs> sure. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, but out of ten then, um, what What would you give it out of ten? Uh, all in all, food, point. food, location, right. relaxation, you know, enjoyment. Yeah, that's, that's six. Okay, brilliant. Six, yeah. Next week. Where are you going next week? <laughs> <laughs> You're not on holiday next week. Uh, cool. Got away with Suzanne's mum and dad again. She Five holidays. Play records. You've got to put some work in. You're in your thirties now. You've got to knuckle down. Boston, more than a feeling. XFM 104.9. Well, another big moment here. We've had rockbusters. Now we're gonna have. Uh, Carl's film quiz thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a film <laughs> quiz thing. Um, I've done Planet of the Apes, right? Because okay. one of the uh, things we did in Lanzarote went on this tour with uh, sort of three northern blokes, and they didn't really know what they were talking about. Joking. What You're you joking. <laughs> Northerners not knowing what they're talking about. You're having a laugh. No, they, they'd obviously sort of not had much luck here, right, and thought, let's go over to Lanzarote, buy some vans, Right, get people in it. We'll do a tour of the island. Mm. And whenever someone asks the question, like, what, when, what year did the volcano happen? They go, oh, we'll take you to the visitor centres. You can, you can read about it there. So they never actually answered anything, right? So they were useless. But one of the things that they <coughs> told us was that Planet of the Apes was filmed in Lanzarote. Mm. Right, okay. Right. That makes sense. A bit of it. Well, does it? 
Does well, that make sense? Well, what do you right, mean? Well, maybe Does it was, maybe it wasn't. Okay, anyway. <laughs> no, no, I mean, if they wanted to show sort of an hour and sort of barren, sort of post-apocalyptic sort of subject, choose where you went, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, but when when we were there, well, he took us to this sort of beach, and I said, is this is this where they did it? And he was like, yeah. I said, what, right, right there, yeah. And I watched it, and I couldn't see where I was. <laughs> yeah, you know that if you watch a film from 1968 and you've been no, to the no, same no, place, you're not going to feature, you're not, not going to see you in the back walk along the beach. It's a new one, new, new Planet of the Apes. Oh, the recent right? Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah, that's what they said, yeah. Right. Right, so I thought I'd sort of... Now, that, that sounds a little bit more far-fetched. I would have thought that was probably a lot in Hollywood. Well, do you, do you want a bit now, or what? What would? Well, no, I wanted you to tell uh, Steve about your holiday, because you told me the way things. Go on, Steve. I mean, bad, bad idea. I had a feeling anyway about uh, going away with like Suzanne's mum and dad, because I've never been into sort of family holidays anyway, yeah. right? Uh, even when you see it, whenever I've been on holiday and you see like families on planes and that, and they're all having a laugh and a joke, loving it, and then on the plane going back, you can see that they've gone off into groups and like you know the dad isn't talking to the daughter and all that business so i thought asking for trouble but you know i do everything once do you know what i mean boxing <laughs> dancing yeah. going on holiday with parents and that yeah. give it a go see how it goes right mm. so um not your a levels but fair it, enough. It, it started off <laughs> it, it started off bad didn't it because last week i told you that uh you know our dad called us up and said you know i want to take some tea bags with us to madeira yeah what's the best way of packing them yeah Right, so I knew there was going to be problems like that because the thing with um, Suzanne's family, right, they they like having a routine. Mm. They know what they're doing every day. Mm -hmm. They know what they're having for tea every day. It's the same thing every week and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought this is going to be interesting, this, because they can't do what they normally do. Sure. Right? <laughs> I love it. I love you treating it like an experiment. Yeah. Right. Just watching them all the time. So um, the first problem was they've never flown before. So I was winding them up a bit. So oh, it's, it's murder. It's really horrible. Uh, you know, the plane goes all over the place. And my mum had done some research saying, well, I've been reading about it, and... Uh, well, she got a funny accent. More more people, uh, more, there's more chance of me being killed on a donkey than there is on a plane. So I hope so. I said, right, when we get there... Spain. I said, when we get there, let's see if there's any donkeys on the beach. Yeah. Right? And she didn't like that. So, oh, what, the joke about you hoping she died? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's up with her? Right, so we get there, and, um, you know, it, they see the villa and that, they're quite happy with all that business, yeah. right, and all that stuff. And then, as time went on, I was getting a bit sort of fed up with them being around us all the time, because yeah, sure. I think you should have your own time when you go on holiday yeah. with the yeah. family. You should say, right, you go off and do your thing. Yeah. We'll do our thing, and we'll meet up later and talk about what we've been doing and mm. stuff. <laughs> Anyway, so it gets to, like, the Thursday. We've been away since Monday, right? And uh, I said, right, we're going out tonight. So a mum says, yeah, we'll come with you. I said, no, no, it's just us. We're having a bit of time on our own, right? Did you, is it true you said to her, you told me this, you said to her, you started to annoy me, I want to drive my own. Well, I just said, well, I told her at the start, I said, it's going to be interesting, this, because people annoy me when they're around me a lot. Sure. So I wasn't nasty to her, I just was saying people, not her. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, you're going to get on my nerves. <laughs> so, sure. um... You hailed a donkey for her. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but uh, seriously, right, with the flying, do you know those stockings that you can get because of, uh, deep vein thrombosis? Probably, sure. She had them on in the cab. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And it's only a two-hour flight, as well, so that was annoying me. Right, so, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, it gets to this, it gets to this, um... You know the the, th the Thursday night when we when I'm going out with Suzanne, yeah. and uh, a mum's like sat sat on the on the sun lounger outside. So and so, where are we going tonight? I said, no, like I said, it's just it's just us. We're going out having a bit of time to ourselves. So uh, I could see as the day was getting on, she was realising that she's got a night in with like her husband. Yeah. Right. Uh, she started her face started to like look miserable. Sure. I thought I'm loving this. <laughs> so I said, right, I'm uh, I'm going in to go and have a shower, go and uh, get ready for the tonight. It's going to be great. And winding them up, just yeah. wind them up because they can't come because yeah. he said they can't. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I go upstairs, have a uh, have a shower and that. I come down, and uh, a mum's smiling. Oh, hell. so I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what's what's going on here? So I went to Suzanne. I said, uh, why is your mum smiling? She's she's not coming. 
She said uh, no, but uh, my dad said he'll he'll take her out now. So in a way, she was happy because she got her own way, yeah. which annoyed me. That annoyed again. you, sure, because you wanted to like, well, oh, you don't even want her husband taking her out. <laughs> well, it's just the fact she didn't want to go out. She was happy to stay in and have sausage, egg and chips that they'd found from some shop that sold English food. Right. So that's almost like what they do if they're sausage, at home. Sausage, egg and chips. So yeah. she was happy with that if we were staying in and having that. Because we were going out, she was fed up. Right. right. So she's smiling. So she's going, yeah, I'm going out now. So I said, well, enjoy yourself. She said, where are you going? I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You don't need to know. Sure. She's yeah. not going to where we're going. Oh, you just don't want us to be in the same restaurant. So yeah, that's right. I said I want a night out on my own with Suzanne. It's our holiday as well. Yeah. I don't know. I can talk to you. Amazing. This is not even his own parents. This is someone else's parents. These are the parents of the women of the woman he loves. But but even Suzanne sort of agreed with me. There's only so much time you can spend with your parents. That's why you leave. That's why when you're ill, you don't go home to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course, the slight difference between you, you, me and you, Carl, is that <laughs> not everyone in the world annoys me. Well, n not everyone does, just... I can see what... I was. I felt a bit guilty that week when he said I was annoying him, but I realise it's not my fault now. No, everyone annoys him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was an all right holiday. It was good to get back. <laughs> Brilliant. I uh, won't be doing it again. So. No. And what now would you say is your relationship with Suzanne's parents? Is it, is it a frosty one? Uh. No, I just think they know that I, that I don't like to them, put up them. them for a long time. Yeah. I mean, when, when we were packing, a man was upset because, like, she really liked the place where we were staying, right? Because it was quite a big villa, because there was a few of us. There was a brother as well with us, right? Yeah. So, uh, a mum said, oh, I love it here. She said, uh, I'm definitely going to book this place again. I said, it's a big, big, you know, a bit big for two of you, isn't it? Just being sarky, like, we're yeah. definitely... Just, I said, just, uh, you know, I won't be coming again. You're like, I don't know what you're like, Carl. You're just, you're a monster. You're an absolute you're monster. You're one of those people that goes, I say as I speak as I find, I say as I, and, and, and jibber dwat the wibble. Yeah. And never the way will slap. You're like uh, a middle-aged man. You're like an old man. You're like an old man and you're, and you're what, 30? I'm just imagining you scraping along in clogs and a flat cap going, oh, that tree's got to come down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Puncturing a kid's ball if he kicks it into your garden by mistake. Yeah. Refusing to give it back. Mm. Yeah. Uh, gather round, gather round. Yeah, there were once Chinese kid as airy as that gal, which is weird because there's not many <laughs> Chinese people that are airy, but this one, I tell you, it were back in 1990. Granddad, are you eating a Twix? <laughs> How are you doing, Carl? I'm all right, yeah. Another well, holiday? Well, well, it wasn't holiday. It wasn't holiday. Well, it was. was. You, had, you had five days off work. Well, why isn't it holiday? You have five days not working for a living. You know how many days holiday it gets a year now? Twenty-nine. Oh, that's it, more than teachers, isn't it? It makes me sick. It makes me sick. Well, I know the kind of hours you work, Rick. <laughs> it's mad. I mean, if you're not in work by midday, you're furious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm always... Twenty-nine's normal for the normal working person. Yeah, but, you know... And anyway, it wasn't a proper holiday. I went to see my mum and dad. It's nice to see them and everything, but it's not holiday, is it? Right. It's not going away. It's not getting on a plane, is it? Going away. Oh, is that definitely a holiday? What happened before 1950? Mm, I don't know. Who used Brighton. to go... Yeah, exactly. Who used to go to Blackpool, Brighton? That was holiday. Yeah, but I didn't Where did you go? Went to Wales. There you go. Lovely holiday. Lovely holiday. Have a holiday in Wales. That's what they say, innit? Have a, come to the Wales and have a holiday. That's what <laughs> they say, innit? So, so, come to Wales and meet your parents. Come to Wales and have a lovely holiday. Right. Well, anyway, it was uh, it was good and that. It's always good to see him. Yeah. But um, week off work. Do you know? Do you know? Like my mum likes gnomes and stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, of course she, she does. Said, oh, a, She's lived with one for thirty years. She said, uh, <laughs> you know, get your dad to take us to this uh, to this park where they've got uh, like. You know, six foot gnomes and stuff, right? <laughs> Have a walk about. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Sounds like a living nightmare. Keep an eye on Carl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway. He stood still for two minutes, someone bought him. <laughs> no, 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 you can't buy him and that. It's like a, it's like a little exhibition thing, yeah. right? And it's part of a hall, right? This big hall that you have to pay to get in, but we didn't want to see the hall, I just wanted to see the gnomes. Of course right? you did, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, my dad says, yeah, well, we can, uh, we can get in there for free. Of course he did, clever. Right? So we parked up on this little country lane, right? <laughs> no one about. We How much down. is it to go in? Like two quid? About three quid each. Yeah. But he said, well, yeah, but if you don't have to pay, do you know what I mean? You enjoy it even more, don't you, when you're walking about and you think, I've got this three quid in my pocket, no one's having it. Yeah. Right? Uh, no, looking over the shoulder for a bloke with a peak hat saying, can I see your ticket, please? <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it more, no. 
Go on. Yeah, but you don't worry about it. Do You've you? got a bit of money now then, Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you've changed. So anyway, yeah. so we had to walk across about four fields. <laughs> For three quid! Right. And uh, what happened was, uh, uh, we're walking through all these fields and what have you, big grass and muddy bits and all that, because it'd been raining, and uh, climbing over fences and stuff. And we're in this field, right? And I look to me right, and there's about 30 cows all staring at us, right? And uh, Suzanne started to panic a bit. She said, This isn't, we shouldn't be here. And Dad says, Of course we can. We're allowed to go wherever we want, you know, all this land, it's. You know, it's Rambler's rights and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, take take a cow if, cow if you want. So, unattended. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, so as you might for leaving him in the field unattended, I'm having one. Yeah. <laughs> so keep us fed walking for a week. <laughs> anyway, these cows start surrounding us. <laughs> surrounding us. <laughs> and, uh, oh, brilliant! Oh no! Face and, off. And Suzanne's panicking, going, "This isn't right. He's gonna. We're, we're not gonna make it to the fence in time. They, 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 they're moving faster than us." And he started sort of running a bit. Wow! And uh, it's like some kind like, of bovine West Side Story. Don't <laughs> a gang of cows <laughs> coming at you. Don't worry about it and stuff. But uh, my dad had to sort of stand there and like wave a stick at him. Of course. And and, uh, and we got away, but. Suzanne was like having a bit of a sweat <laughs> you on. got away. Saying, uh, you know, we could have got killed. Sure. And my dad saying, no, nah, it never happens. And I just <laughs> wondered if, if it does, if, if there's a risk of. Yeah, it's, it is rare, but um, there's been a couple of cases of being trampled by cows. They're not aggressive, they sort of run through you. Well, they, they're aggressive if they've got a calf. They uh, a, 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 what? They had kids with them. Kids, yeah. That's a, that's a goat you're thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they were trying to sneak into the no thing, <laughs> and they were worried that, like, if too many people did it, like, they bought some cows, we can just sneak in. They were trying, cows, yeah. No one's expecting cows. And the cows were humans. going, walk upright like a human. <laughs> Don't walk up right. <laughs> they thought you'd blow their cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, people have been killed by cows before. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that was like the highlight, and then. Uh, so when you arrived there, you were presumably covered in mud, looking like something that had just come from Glastonbury, staggering around this this uh, it exhibition. Wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It was just like a, a woods, and it had like a, a funny sort of funeral, pla uh, like a graveyard thing, right? Mm. With bodies sort of hanging out the ground in that, and uh, really? we had what? these six foot gnomes, right? Uh, and then we. We just set off again, walked back. But we sure this wasn't a field. dream? No, it was good, it was good. But then, then I got back, right, Steve, and uh, called up Ricky. I said, right, uh, you know, are you about? Have a chat and that. So he said, oh, I'll just come round. It's a, it's a nice day. Have a drink and what have you. So I got round there at about half past six, right? Uh, go up to his door, knock on his door, right? He stood there with his tackle out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and what, what did you make of that? What was wrong with that? What do you mean, what's wrong with that? Why were you looking at it? Why were you looking at it? I tried not to look at it. But again, you're always sort of attracted to it, aren't you? Kind of like, <laughs> I've never been attracted to another man's tackle. I don't know what you mean. You can't help but have a, have a little sly look. Especially when it's there. When you when you ring the bell, and I mean the, the one on the door, right? <laughs> and that's, that's hanging out. And does he dress to the left or the right? It was to the left, right? Yeah, it was left, yeah. Just pop, just popped it out of my shorts for him. Just popped him out of the shorts. Should have seen the state of him. <laughs> shorts on, no top, a uh, cigar. <laughs> Looked like someone out of The Sopranos. It was a mess. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we, we sat on the balcony drinking wine, didn't we? Did you pop it back in, or was it still... Yeah, I, put, I popped it straight back in. I've got the laugh. Sure. I've got the laugh that yeah. I wanted. Yeah. He walked in, he went, mm, it's not that hot. Straight away, <laughs> it's not that hot. Oh, brilliant. Then, uh, was that knob news, or was there more? No, it's got more knob news. That's just a taster. Just a taster. Listen, let's play some average, let's play some great music, and maybe we should have some early knob news. No, because it's in the middle of the night.
I think holidays are, are pretty stressful. Because you always sort of end up doing stuff that you don't really want to do. It's just that suddenly you've got sort of free time on your hands that you're not used to. Last proper holiday that we had, I went to uh, Lanzarote. And it's sold as uh, Lanzarote, the volcanic island, which isn't a, a great nickname to have, is it? You know what I mean? Might as well have Lanzarote, the disaster zone. Welcome. Right? But I uh, spent the week on coaches going around looking at like different volcanoes. And none of them are active. So basically, spent time looking in big holes. Britain's too expensive though, isn't it? To sort of have weekends away and stuff. Some point last year, we, we went away somewhere and uh, ended up having a walk around this sort of seal sanctuary. 14 quid. They weren't doing anything, because they're ill. They weren't jumping through hoops and all that. They were just floating about, hardly moving. 14 quid. I mean, I'm not having a go, do you know what I mean? If there's six seals, I have to have somewhere to go, but don't charge me to come in. Or at least let me see them again when they're better. I think the best place I've been is uh, Rome. It's pretty amazing. Just the amount of old stuff they've got, do you know what I mean? Every, every corner you turn, it's like, oh, look at that. That's old, isn't it? But then again, that's sort of, that's the problem with it as well. Because once you've been, there's no need to go back because nothing changes. Do you know what I mean? Once you've seen the Colosseum, they don't do it up. I think it's clever though how, how Rome have managed to do that. They've kept basically what, what is a load of old stuff. Right? There's no, no overheads. Just leave it. The older it gets, the better. And yet people are paying to go over there and have a look at it. Whereas if the Colosseum was here, Right. You'd have people saying, oh, that's a mess, get it knocked down. We're talking about uh, going to the moon, trips to the moon, that's what they're working on. I don't fancy that. I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing there, is there? I mean, Neil Armstrong, that spaceman, he's been, hasn't he? But he hasn't been back, so can't have been that good. At the end of the day, it's, it's just one big rock. You might as well go to Lanzarote, if that's what you want.